All right, guys, our next lesson in our uh, South American unit is going to be on government and economics of South America. So just like yesterday, I need you to fill in everything that's underlined into your notes page, turn the notes page into me, and then move on to the next assignment, okay? First, we know what governments, uh, we know governments, right? So this is going to be kind of a review of things we've talked about before. So communism, this is rule by one, a dictator, okay? Example, the best examples that we've had are Cuba Cap, and uh, Fidel Castro so far. Other examples include North Korea and China. Next, we have a democracy. This is ruled by many. An example uh, is at the United States. The Constitution makes us a democracy, also makes us a limited government, while communism is an unlimited government. You might make that note so you can remember those. Other examples, examples that exist today inside of South America, are Argentina, Brazil, and Peru. Argentina wasn't always like that. Remember yesterday we talked about the Dirty War. They were under a military group called the Junta, and now they have transitioned into, um, into modern-day democracies. Lastly, we have again our junta. This is a military government where few people have control, and this is a government that usually installs itself following a revolution. That's what happened in Argentina that led to us that led to that happening. So let's look at these types of governments that we have. Okay, rule by one. A government that's ruled by one is that is. Uh, a dictator like communism and it's going to be an unlimited government rule by few necessarily doesn't sound bad but that's going to be a junta and that's going to be a terrible government to have and it's going to be ruled by few and that's also an unlimited version of a government while finally rule by many this is going to be a democracy where the democracy, uh, everybody has a say in the government, and it's going to be uh, a lot better situation for the people. And this is going to be a limited government. Okay, So let's look at these things. Which of these uh, does not have a limited government? Okay, uh, We're going to list out all four answers. You have those already on your notes page. So Peru, Venezuela, Brazil, and Argentina. Look at your notes um, earlier in our note page. We had it written down which of these is not, a, which ones of these are limited governments. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and circle our unlimited government. And this one is going to be Venezuela. Okay. Venezuela is going to be our unlimited government. Okay. The next thing that we're going to have. Uh, we're going to kind of review a little bit about our information yesterday. Some rights and responsibilities that citizens have. Okay, uh, These are going to be things that you are uh, trying to do to try to make yourself a better government, make sure that people are taken care of, and so less people are willing to um, be upset. Okay, These are responsibilities and rights. And these things are going to include voting, Paying taxes, and serving on juries. And I apologize for my writing. It's hard on my iPad. Okay. So serving on juries. So these are all the rights and responsibilities that should be taken seriously by a citizen in democracy. Next thing, we're going to look at a bank system. This is how banks work, and we're going to look into uh, a potential problem that we could have with a bank. So uh, the definition of a bank system is when people deposit money into the bank. Okay, Very simple. Banks are there for us to hold our money. But the bank, just because you put the money there doesn't mean that it's always there 100% of the time. Uh, there isn't actually much money at each bank. Uh, so that could potentially cause some problems. Okay, Just think about some ideas of what could go wrong already. So let's say for an example, you deposit $1,000 into a savings account at Citibank. That $1,000 does not technically stay there with your name on it, ready for you to pick up. You can go and pick it up, but not all the time is it always there. 
It is added to an entire amount of money that the bank has on hand. It is usually locked up in the vault. You know, you see all those little cartoons where people go to the big bank vaults. Uh, so you put in $1,000. You, you have the potential of always getting your $1,000. Now, let's look at TVMS Bank. TVMS Bank has two customers, Mr. Sledge and Mr. Nell. So Mr. Sledge puts in $100,000 in the bank. Boy, don't we, we all wish we had $100,000. Then Mr. Nell needed a loan to buy a house. Uh, he asked the bank for $50,000 because he had the rest of the money. The bank approved the loan and gave him the money. So now, if they only had two customers, $50,000 got taken away from $100,000. That leaves the bank with $50,000 left. The bank goes on and on with hundreds of customers putting money in and taking it out, just like this example. What happens if Mr. Sledge all of a sudden wanted to take his money back from the bank? He wants to buy a store that costs $75,000, but the bank only has $50,000. Is that going to work out? Could the bank give him all the money that he wanted? No, not really, because they were missing the money. So the bank gets the money from the National Reserves. This is where the government holds money as well. They would call them, they would get money transferred down, and it would work out. But what if everybody in the entire banking system, in the entire nation, all wanted to get their money at one time. Uh, how would people feel when the bank told them they didn't have enough money to give them? Think about it. If everybody tries to pull it out at one time, is it, if it doesn't always stay there, are they going to be able to do that? No, they're not. So you're going to have a lot of problems. What if in just one country, everyone in a particular country wanted their money out of the bank? Uh, even after getting all the refills, they're still going to run out of money. All this situation is called a bank run. Okay? The results of this, these issues is what's called a bank run, and this is a very short, uh, very big shortage of capital inside of a country. Now, if that ever happens, you're going to see a lot of issues there. Uh, the country is going to be bankrupt. The people are going to have a hard time keeping, um, keeping everybody happy. Uh, you're going to see a lot of overthrows of the government. And this is what happened here in South America. Okay. In South America, we had the exact same thing happen. We had the, co the countries of Peru and Argentina. Okay. We're going to write that down. Write that down in your paper, too. Uh, it was that Peru and Argentina Both survived uh, a bank run, and they're called economic miracles today, okay? So we need to remember Peru and Argentina are economic miracles because of the bank runs, all right? So go ahead and finish your notes. After you finish your notes, uh, there's a video for you to watch that I need you to respond to, all right? Any questions, just ask.